Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we just thank you for this beautiful morning and the, the faces that have come back to see us this morning. Lord, we, we know that you've been watching over them in their absence and have guided them back to us. And we just want to make sure they know that we miss them and we do appreciate when they're here, Lord. Lord, stay with us as we go through this worship service and just guide us in, in the path that you would want us to go. Amen. 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 All right. If you would rise and join me in turning to page 77, <clears throat> how great thou art. Sing uh, three times for a second and last. <clears throat> 77.
forward this time. Good morning, ladies. How are you guys this morning? Good? Back there, Colorado. You know what we're going to talk about this morning? Oh, yeah, kind of. That, that's kind of the end game, but we're going to talk about how you get, get there. And do you know what sin is? Sin. No sin. S I N. Well, sin is is when you do something that's what you shouldn't be doing. Something bad. You guys ever do that? No. <laughs> no? Well, you know what one of the best ways to get get away from that is? It's it's called to repent. But you have to confess your sins, which means you have to, to say that you acknowledge what you did, which means you, you understand what you did, and say you're sorry for what you did and really mean it. So you gotta, you got to own up and say what you did. What do you think about that? We have more kids. I know we have more kids. Well, let me finish what I was talking Be polite. Okay. Angel was upset because you guys came in and didn't get a chance to come up. So if you guys want to come up. <laughs> I see a Ben coming. That's a, some kind of haircut, buddy. Ben chilling. That's your newest one? Yep. Alright, what we're going to talk about this morning, and I just told them, you guys know what sin is? I know y'all do. I know you do. Jesus Christ? Well, he's the only one that didn't sin. Oh. Yeah, he's a good guy. So when, when you do something that's, that's wrong and that you shouldn't be doing, that's a sin. So, one of the things that you have to do when you sin is to tell God, look, you know, I did this and I know it's wrong. I shouldn't have done it. And I'm really sorry. And then that's how you get forgiveness for your sins. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? You give God your junk and he gives you eternal salvation. Martin Luther said that. What? Angel. All right, it's time this morning. We're gonna we're gonna pray this morning. Who's gonna do it this morning? Not it. You want to pray, Ben? No. Wait. I think Ben does. No. Go ahead, Ben. No. 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 Okay. How about if I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you good with that? Dear Lord, thank you for the, these children that have come forward this morning. And one of the things about being a kid is that you're still in that age of innocence. But we know that it's matter. We know that the even, even as children, we were still sinners, Lord, and that we just ask your forgiveness for, for all of these sins that we've created and those that we know that we're human and we're going to we're going to create. It's human to sin, and we just ask you for your, your forgiveness and and thank you for the, the salvation that you give us with Jesus dying on the cross. 
Amen. This is what you were pointing to, isn't it? Yep. You guys want it in the list. Let's not do the candy. Let's do this stuff. Candy. Candy. That's Scott's stuff.
that brings us to joys and concerns. I was waiting for something to write on. Yes, sir. Uh, my friend Chuck had a few freaked out and you're back to talking and eating and doing a whole lot better. Oh, Good so, deal. And I have another friend that uh, I missed two yesterday on uh, Rose Powell, mm -hmm. who is more or less on death door right now. They called out to see him. He's up where and wait and talking, but uh, got the fluid in his lungs, they can't get out. Just, he's a really good guy. Out of town. He's a really great guy, too. How's your brother doing, Angel? Um, better, I guess. I haven't talked to my sister in law this week. Yeah, she's doing good. Yeah, she's doing good. 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 And it's good we got the, the Bierces back. And we've got the niece back. Yes, ma'am. Everybody's safety? That's a good prayer, Chelsea. He's a good looking young young man. Alright, with that, let's let's go over. We got quite a bit to talk about this morning. Yes, ma'am. I want to ask for prayer for Bert Warren's family. Bert Warren and Joe Andrews to be staunch members of the Howard. church. And so he passed away this past week. Mm. Have prayer for his family too. Were they kin to Murtis? Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with a, a lot of concerns. Uh, we know that there's no concern too big or, or too many for you, Lord, but they do weigh heavy on us here, Lord, that we're we're just not as capable as you are, and we don't understand the big picture like you do. We do try to, to just love and trust you, Lord, and sometimes it's hard. Especially when we have loved ones that we get kind of jealous that we know that things happen that we're not going to see them for a while until we get up there with you. But we want to try to make sure that we have a better life here. We do praise you, like, for Chuck, Chuck Jolly that's doing a little bit better. But with, with Russell, Russell's, you know, he's, he's working on preparing to, to come and see you, Lord, and that's, that's hard on the family, Lord. 
please keep keep hands of this brother. And Catherine is with her cancer uh, coming back negative. These are praises that we thank you for, Lord. We thank you. We praise you for for McKenna graduating from high school and moving on to a new new chapter in her life. And keep the family of, of her born in your your prayers, Lord, because again, it's it's just really hard on the family here with. We've, we've grown to trust these people when we should be really trusting you, but these are people that we love and rely on, and, and only you know the, the, what's really happening and what, what the true picture is. And Lord, just a special prayer from, from Chelsea this morning that you, bring, you keep watch over her father and just bring him home safe. Bring him home soon. She needs him. Catherine needs him. So just keep a, a special, special arm of protection over him. And bring him back so that he can sit here in the pew with Chelsea and, and help mold and guide her. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. You can remain seated for the next hymn. We're going to turn with me to 378. Oh, one of my favorites. Amazing Grace. 378. Sing uh, first, second, and last. Please take this, this small portion and, and make it multiply as only you can, Lord. Amen.
his selection, Tennessee. Yeah. Four, six, seven. Post I've seen you move in years. Rushed and obey. First, second, and last. here's the problem with it. It points out everything that is wrong with us. And I'm going to show you how here in a little bit. So I'm going to read it real quick and then we're going to kind of go through some things. Sing it. Sing it. <laughs> Blessed is the one. Is that what you want to? Yep. 
whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in all the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my inequity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you. While you may be found, surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surrounding me with the songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like those, like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. You righteous say, all you who are upright in heart. All right. Now, if y'all remember, King David was the guy that he saw Bathsheba when he was looking down from his kingdom and saw her in the, the, the shadows of the water and had her brought to his chambers. And even after he was told that this was his friend Uriah's wife, the man that lay, would later lay down his life for him, he still did it. And he paid for that sin dearly. His first, his son that was born out of that sin was killed. So, Nathan at this time, I don't know when this time is, but Nathan is going through, or I'm sorry, David is going through some kind of a rough patch. He's, things aren't going so well for David. But David, is he's a smart king. You know, he he knows the Lord. He's, he's, even though he does, did some dumb things, he's kind of smart. So he starts out, he said, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. Well, we know, because we've talked about this several times, blessed is another word for happy. So happy is the one. And transgressions is another big fancy word for sin. Now let's talk about sin for a minute. Sin is one of those nasty words that we all try to when we hear sin we kind of run from it because that's got a bad connotation. But our society right now is changing because Sin now can be an attraction. Las Vegas is called Sin City. Sin City, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You know what? That's not entirely true. Because the guilt and the shame will never leave you. The guilt and shame never leave. Sometimes the kids and all that never leave either that you get from that trip. 
And there's another thing that's, that's really, the more I thought about this, is the way our society is changing. If you would ask, if you would poll a hundred young people today in America, what is the number one thing that makes us us and makes us who we are here in America? That would be our autonomy. Here in America, we love our autonomy. Well, here's the thing about being, a, being autonomous. We don't want nobody telling us what to do, where to do it, or how to do it. We want things on our terms and no other way. Which I think is a big part of why we don't see a lot of people that used to be in churches in church. Because what does the Bible do? <clears throat> Tells us what to do, how to do it, and where to do it. So that takes away our, our autonomous thinking. But here's the other problem. Let's say... Uh, Everything is based off of what we believe or what how we think things should be. Which is pretty self-centered, isn't it? Well, let me let me put this challenge out there. How many of you would take your thoughts for 24 hours, the last 24 hours, if we had a big whiteboard up here let's put all your thoughts up here on the board for the last 24 hours anybody want to do that nope. i don't angel does <laughs> well here's the other thing and i, I shared this with scott yesterday because i was just so amazed in 2016, Gallup does these polls on everything. The Gallup poll for people that approved of pornography was like 20, what was it, 23% acceptance rate in America. In 2018, they did another poll it had risen to 47% of people in America that were okay with pornography. Last month, they did another poll. We were up to 57% of America approves of pornography. I didn't get asked. I, I just read it on Facebook. But that to me is alarming. So the point I'm trying to make is when we, we look at this autonomous and it's, we're basing sin off of what we will, what we think is right or moral or just, then my, my, what I approve of and what Bob approve of and Linda approves of is going to be probably three different things or three different levels. But you know what? God gave us a set of rules. And if we would just follow those rules, everything would run nice and smooth. So, getting back to poor David, David is, is, you know, he's followed those rules. And then all of a sudden, here's this beautiful woman, and he's human. So what's, what's David do? He commits adultery with this woman. And they have a baby. That's a sin. 
And even though David repents for that sin, the consequences are still there. And David acknowledges that when, when we're born, we're born with sin. So now David, all this is, is kind of behind him. He's, he's trying to be figure out how to be happy. So he says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. How are they covered? Jesus hung up on that cross. Jesus died and took all of our sins for us and paid that price. And I think I told the kids this morning, that's a pretty good trade. We give God our junk. He gives us eternal salvation. And I believe that was a quote from Martin Luther. So he goes on, Blessed is the one who sin the Lord does not count against them and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through the groaning all day long for day and night your hand was heavy on me and my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Don't we know about the heat of summer around here? South Georgia gets pretty hot. So what is he talking about here? He's kept silent. I think he's talking about his confession. And here in the Methodist Church we don't really do a lot of open confession as we should. We say we do, but we really have not done a lot of open confession. And one of the things that's great about confession, the way we do it here, because the Lord said, did not say, he said, he did say confess your sins. He did not say confess your sins to a priest. That was not his requirement. Confess your sins. Sometimes it's good to get it out in the open with those that are around you that love you. That's what's good about church because you get that place where there is, should be no judgment and you've got people you know that will listen to you with open hearts. But then David says, you know, I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover my inequity. I said, you know, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So why is he wanting to confess to God? Because God made the roles. I broke God's law, God's law, His rules. So, don't you think I should, you know, let God know what I did and I'm sorry? Because there's, there's two ways that you can confess. You can confess because you got caught. Somebody called you out. You remember last week when when Nathan, and Nathan was pretty, pretty brave, I gotta say. When Nathan said, you know that rich man and poor man? And you were so angry at the, the poor man because the rich man took, or at the rich man, because he took advantage of the poor man? And Nathan came along and said, David, this is you we're talking about. This is you. You are the guy that sinned. We don't have to go find somebody. It's you. That was pretty bold on Nathan's part. So, if you're already caught, and you say, well, I did it. I'm really sorry. I'll never do it again. 
you got to sometimes wonder in the honesty of that confession and that repentance. But if you didn't get caught, and you come along and you say, God, I stole those pears from that orchard. I wasn't hungry. I don't even know why I stole them. I don't even like pears, but I stole them pears. I stole them because I knew I shouldn't. And I'm sorry for that. How honest is that? And how does God give you that, that heavy hand that, that David's talking about? It's guilt. It's shame. I told you you go to, to Las Vegas and what stays in Vegas, it stays there. What happens there? Well, guess what? That guilt and that shame you can't get rid of. It's going to follow you. It's going to bring you down. It's going to bring you down. But there's a way around that. Let him take care of it. Why is David singing? If you can't confess your sins and go and talk to God and not come out singing, you're not being honest with your, your full confession. You're not being completely up front. You need to give it all to him. Don't hide in that hiding place. Don't try to protect yourself from, from that shame and guilt because you can't do it. You can't do it. If you did something wrong, what's the, what's the old saying? Man up to it. If you did something wrong, say, God, I did it. Because you know what? There, there's something about us as humans. We just... We got the sin. It goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. And I, I've heard people go say, well, it goes back to Adam and Eve, and Eve talked Adam into taking the apple. You know what? Adam made his own choice too. They are both equally involved in this. So it's not a man or woman thing. It's a us thing. We're all guilty. And there's a writer, theologian, W.T. Chester. Has anybody ever read him? He's not real well known. I don't think he is. Anyway, there's something I read this week that he did a column in a paper or something. He said, and the question that was posed to him is, what do you think the problems are in this world today? You know what his reply was? I am. Period. Wow. That is some serious insight right there. What are the problems in the world today? I am. Where have we heard that before? I am. In a song. In a song? What he's saying in that little two words, mankind, we are our own worst enemy. We cannot go without some form of sin. In fact, Paul said it pretty well about where we talk about confession. Paul in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 
verse 3 if you're looking for it. Pharaoh said, I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear. I don't think there's anything on it. I think I'm pretty clean. So my conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. So what does that say to me as a sinner? I need to worry about the laws that God has set forth for us. There's really ten major uh, ten major ten major rules that we need to follow. The Ten Commandments. They were given to us very early in, in our existence. If we follow those ten rules, how likely is it that we're going to break man's rule? If we follow those, those ten rules, how likely is it that we're going to offend anyone? Well, nowadays, probably pretty likely, but for the most part, those ten rules will keep society running pretty smoothly, won't it? But no! No! We're in a world of autonomous thinking. And I heard uh, someone say, well, Facebook and Twitter and truth, what is the other one? Truth something? Instagram. Instagram. Social media. That's where all our communication goes. We can confess it on, on Instagram or we can, can face it on Twitter. And Twitter will make it right. Well, you know, we just came out of a pandemic. How about I pose this? I think we're in a social media pandemic right now. Even, even the news media cannot get along right now. So I think we need to go back to the old-fashioned way of doing things. We read it here. We try not to, we try to be like Paul where you know, I don't think I've done anything wrong, but if I did, I'll answer to it to God. As long as we can do that, we can take that heavy burden off our heart. And hope for the Lord. He's going to help us. He's going to shield us. He says it right here. We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help with, and our shield. So, we're going to rejoice, be glad, Sing. Because you know what? Our hearts are light. My heart is light. Especially when I look out right now. I'm seeing all these smiles that just is amazing to me. So thank you all. So with that, I beg you don't don't let another day, if you have not truly taken Jesus into your heart and said, look, Lord, I'm sorry for all of my sins and accepted God and accepted Jesus in, into your hearts, I'm going to make the altar open here in just a minute. Come forward, we will pray together. And 
help you find that eternal salvation that you so richly deserve. Especially we've got all these, these young ones this morning. They are our future. If we don't teach them about God's love and teach them the way we should live, we're not doing our job as parents. So Scott, what have we got this morning? 504, Old Rugged Cross. <laughs> And don't forget we have birthday cake afterwards.